Okay, now can you hear me on the microphone? Okay, excellent. Thank you, everyone. Um, so welcome to the presentation on the Program and Events Dashboard, Tips and Tricks. Um, I am Leanna Davis, and I have been here as the chair of the Wikipedia Education User Group for every other session, and I'm going to switch hats here and wear the hat of my actual day job, which is working for Wiki Education, which is the organization that runs the education program in the United States and Canada. And we are also the organization that develops and maintains the dashboard. Um, I want to give initial credit here to Sage Ross, who is my colleague who actually does this. And so hopefully none of your questions will be too technical in nature because I have no idea about the technical aspects of things. I just use the dashboard a lot. Um, so I hopefully can get answers to any questions that you have. Um, but if not, I may have to defer a few to Sage um, to follow up later. Um, so I want to start with a show of hands here. Who has ever used the dashboard either as an event participant or a program leader? Okay, it looks like nearly everyone in the room. That's excellent. Um, so I want to give you a little background, start by getting, giving a little bit of background about the dashboard, and then I'll walk through some tips and tricks of how to do various things. And then Amanda from Wikimovimiento Wiki Brazil will come and explain how she uses it in her education program. Um, and then we'll have an opportunity for you to ask questions, to play around with some of the features that I'm showing if you haven't used them before. And um, hopefully I can answer any questions that you have, although we'll see how good I do at that particular part of the session. Um, so Wiki, as I mentioned, Wiki Education is the one that originally developed the dashboard. And we built it actually for our own programmatic work. Um, we have a separate installation of it that's not the Programs and Events dashboard that we use for all of our programs. And it has an advanced set of features that we use that ha has things like integration with our Salesforce database. And it has a series of emails that it sends out and a bunch of other things that are not relevant for all global programs. Um, but we also installed a version of it on WMF Labs that removes the wiki education specific thing. And um, it leaves a robust event and program management tool for users, and especially an education program course management uh, system for users, which I think most of you are using, or some of you are using. I've seen lots of screenshots from it and slides at this conference, which is great. Um, so it starts from the idea that you have a group of users in Wikimedia projects that you want to see the statistics about that those users' contributions to Wikimedia projects during a particular time frame. And it tracks any language and project in Wikimedia. So it started in 2015 is when we created it originally. Since then, it's had a steady growth in users. Um, so you can see there were just a few people using it originally. And over time, more and more and more program leaders in the Wikimedia universe have been adopting it into their um, program and events. And it's a really powerful tool that is very poorly documented. And so I will apologize for that. I know documentation is one of the things that we could do better on. Um, but we do a series of these kind of tips and tricks sessions at any of the conferences that we attend in an effort to try to do some more helpful um, organizational work on how do you actually use this tool in the features. Um, so I want to start with some of the kind of basic stuff and then work into the, some more advanced features. Um, so starting with campaigns. So everything is organized on the dashboard with the idea of a campaign. So your campaign is a group of programs or events that all get blended together. So you might choose a campaign that represents your affiliate, or you can have multiple overlapping campaigns. So you might have a campaign for your affiliate. You might have a campaign for your affiliate in a particular year. You might have a campaign for your affiliate in a particular year and your education programs. Um, and so each event or program or course for an education program can be added to as many campaigns as you want. And when you create the campaign, you set it for a particular year 
um, or a particular time frame. So you put a start and an end date on the campaign, and that is what you're asking the dashboard to track the users and the programs that are in that campaign during that particular time frame. Um, once you are within a campaign, then you can create individual what we call course pages in our version. They're labeled as program pages, event pages. Probably most of us in the education space are using these as course pages. And these are give you the opportunity to track a particular set of users in that program page. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new one um, and walk you through some of the choices that you have there as you're creating it. Let me try to move this microphone so I can stand in front of the computer. And I will apologize in advance. I am using a Serbian keyboard, which I do not know how to particularly use. So if I click on the wrong thing, um, uh, then uh, bear with me here. Okay, so you, when you log in, you will start, and um, you can either participate in an existing campaign or you can create your own. Um, you click Create to start. And you have three choices of different kinds of campaigns here, and I want to sort of walk you through um, what each of them are. So a basic program is probably what you would use for an education program. It's any kind of event um, that is tracking uh, a group of users in that event. An edit-a-thon um, is a shorter duration one, and it won't make automatic edits on, um, on wikis. So I will get into that a little bit more of what that actually means. And then an article-scoped program is for typically when you are working with a group of Wikimedians who may be making edits as well that you are not interested in tracking and you are only interested in tracking their edits to a particular subset of articles. So I will also get into this a little bit later of what that actually means. Well, so yeah. Uh-huh. So, yeah, you can create a campaign for, uh, the question was, why do you create a program first? Um, so, ideally, you would actually create the campaign first. Um, there's the button to, to do that on the previous screen here. Um, and so, you would create the campaign of what, you know, your particular organization or affiliate in a particular year, and then you would create a program within that campaign, and then it would uh, affiliate that with... Each, yes, so each of, you can have each can, uh, program pages that represent each of these different kinds of programs within an overall campaign. So this is not decided at the campaign level, it's decided at the individual program level. So I'm going to create a basic program here. Um, so we're going to call this EduWiki, whoops, if I can type, we are going to call this EduWiki, and... We are going to call this at Wikipedia, whoops, and that is not a ampersand, so I'm just going to ignore that. I'm going to put this on English Wikipedia, and this is a test campaign during EduWiki. So there's an ability here to check private program. And this is for if you're interested in only having the program and the information viewable by you as a facilitator. And there was a lot of requests to have this come in for places where there's personal safety issues of having a list of event participants at a particular event. So if that is true for you, you can check this. People can still register for your event and could get listed on the dashboard page, but it will not be visible to all the other event participants or anyone else in the Wikimedia movement. If you don't check this, all of the information of people's usernames will be visible to everyone. So that's the difference between a private and a non-private. The metrics will track, but the, the private campaign, you will be able to see if, if you are the facilitator of that particular event, you will be able to see all the usernames, but no one else will. So if you make it private, it's just not visible, and it will not be included in your um, top-level statistics of the particular campaign. 
So I'm going to create I'm going to create this as not a private campaign. You can choose the start and end of activity tracking. So I'm going to pretend we started this back in March and we're going to track it through the end of August. This separate event start and end times is mostly used for edit-a-thon. So if you're interested in tracking specifically um, a time, a start time for an edit-a-thon and an end time for an edit-a-thon, if you have a timed event that you want to track stuff during that, you could do that. Andrew. Yeah. Uh, are, are you able to toggle the private and or non-private app? Yes. Yes. I'll show you that in a second. Okay. So I'm going to click create my program, or I'm going to if I click the correct button. Okay, so this has created the program, and Andrew's question there is like, are you able to toggle this? Oh dear, this is giving some Serbian to me, but hopefully that'll be okay. Um, so, so if you click this edit details button, this is your opportunity to do all kinds of advanced features in here. So you can edit any of the things that we just did. Um, so those would be the start and end time for activity tracking, the home wikis that you're tracking. If you want to, if you realize you made a typo in the name, you can update the name. And then there's a whole series of other um, things that you can toggle here. So let me walk through what each of these are. Um, so there's the home wiki, which is sort of the one that you expect to, the, the participants to make the majority of edits to, but you can also include tracked namespaces and tracked wikis. So if you want to also make sure you're tracking contributions that they might make to Wikidata or Commons, or you expect to have people working in multiple different languages, you can add multiple languages and wiki projects here. And then if you're specifically interested in tracking certain namespaces, this request came out of um, the Wikibooks community who are working on cookbooks, which is a specific namespace within Wikibooks which is not the article namespace within Wikibooks. Um, so the namespaces the dashboard will automatically track is only the article namespaces in each project. Um, so if you're interested in tracking people's edits to other namespaces, if that's, you know, you're doing work on different projects that are in draft namespace or the cookbooks namespace in Wikibooks or anything else that's not the main space of your uh, language project, then you can add them here in the tracked namespaces. So this gives you the flexibility of what statistics do you want to have in those top level numbers and where do you want to have information roll up. Yeah. Here, let's get a mic for you, Amanda. Yeah, yeah. Just jump in here. Um, this is really used by professors when they are having a longer classes, like months classes, and people are working on their sandboxes. So this enables the teachers and the professors to see what the, the students are doing in their sandboxes also, not only when they publish the article. So it's a, a, it's a, a good feature to use when you are having a, a several months program with students. Yes. What do you put if you want to track a soundboard there? Soundboard? Sandboxes? Uh, yes. Yeah. yes. You, yeah, if you click on this drop down, it gives you the op option for each of the different. So in this case, because my I'm only tracking English Wikipedia, it's giving you the, so sandboxes would be user space. Um, so in Spanish, it would be Tachet. Yes, if you put Spanish Wikipedia in there, it should give you those options. Spanish Wikipedia to show here, so they can see. When you choose the user space, you are you are tracking the sandboxes. This is tricky to use in editatons, for example, because the number of articles created will be high and will be different because. Um, will be counted the number of sandboxes people created. So it's not good to use when we are tracking uh, editatons and having the metrics of, uh, at an event, for example. So pay attention. Is it possible to try from categories from Wikipedia? I will get Wiki to that. OK, I will repeat once again. Yes, oh, go ahead. In Wikipedia, uh, we have created a category. There are a list of articles to be developed. 
So, is it possible to track those articles based yes. on the category? Yes. Let Can me you just to demonstrate, if you don't mind? Uh, this is that's like not in this screen. So, let me finish explaining sure, this sure. screen, and then I will get to that later. Thank There's you. a whole advanced ability. So, I'll talk about page pile and pet scan and categories there. So. Um, so let me talk about the other things that are on this page as well. The passcode is just an automatically generated code that you can give to users to register for and enroll in your particular event. And there's also a URL that they can just click to create their account and have them added to your particular program. So if you are distributing this out to a group of students, they can just use this passcode. And you can edit this to make it human readable in your language instead of just being a random string of, um, of letters, or you can just send the automatically generated one. Or you can also, I'll show you later, manually add in a list of usernames for participants in your program. You don't need them to opt in, you can just add them um, as well. Mohamed, did you have a question? Use the mic. No. Could it be possible to add new namespaces there? Because it's limited to some, th yes. the most usual one. Yes, ask Sage, I think. <laughs> OK. That, that would be a technical question that I don't have the answer to. There is an open hour with Sage next week. Yes, I will, I will get to that as well. Uh, that is a great place to, to ask questions. I will, I will bring that up in a, in a second here. Okay, so let me, um, let me walk through a few other things here. So your event start and end date, this is what you put in before. The type, this is an opportunity if you want to toggle. Go ahead. Yeah, um, my question is actually regarding the tracking period. Um, yes. I think you passed it. It's, in the, it's down, yeah, this is it. So um, last, last two years, we uh, launched a program in Iraq to train students, and we wanted to measure the sustainability of their contributions to Wikipedia. I created the dashboard, but our long, longitudinal study was about four, four years or five years. We wanted to measure their contributions after the finish of the program, but the tracking period is limited to one year. Yes. Yes. I think this is for Sage too. I would I well, so what I would recommend for you to do in that case is Creating. to clone it and ch and have four different years yeah. of programs. You could also even check it to be private, so the participants won't see that, and um, when they log in, they won't see the additional yeah. pages in their dashboard. But you can create. We do this at Wiki Education all the time. We will clone existing courses of users and make it in a private program so we can watch what they do after the conclusion of our programs. Um, so if you make it private, then they can't see that they're in there and the only people who can see um, what they're doing is you as the facilitator. So. Yeah, thank you. Tace, yeah. Hi. These are great questions, thank you. I should have said before, please interrupt me with questions. The tracking period changed recently, didn't it? Um, because I used to, once I expected that at the end of the, of the activity, it would stop tracking. And then I was surprised. I, it seems to me that recently it tracks a month further. It will track page views a month further, um, but I don't believe it tracks edits a month further. Yeah, but that's what, is that a recent change? Are you aware? No, it's always tracked page views um, for a month after the conclusion of your program because typically you're interested in page views of sort of what it, the impact of your work is kind of after the conclusion of the program. Okay, thank you. Hey, that, that brings me to two more questions. Yes. So, so there, there was this retention thing which was killed some years ago. Yes. But if I, if I clone it and make it invisible, I actually can have the real retention of people. I can see whether they edit afterwards. So yes. that, that's, an in, that's useful information. And then any of these things you are sharing here, I, I sometimes need to transfer those to, to our teachers or to people I work with. So yes. what I'm lacking a little bit is, I don't know if it should be a tutorial online train. I don't know what it should be, what should be the product. But what I'm lacking a lot that unless I reach out to Sage or I really deep down dirty, go somewhere down there, try to figure out the informations you are sharing here, 
I will not figure out like this information that it goes one month beyond with the views, which was something we, we thought we were looking for, but we didn't know dashboard can make it. And that's why I'm using like three other tools to get the metrics together. And it's, it just goes nonsense all the time. I'm like so frustrated about it. So are, is there any plan how to make this accessible to, to the real people behind this? Yes, I, I, will, I will say, I think we fully recognize that a lot of the dashboard is a very complex tool with a lot of advanced features and not very well documented how to actually use it. And that's something that we would like to work on. Um, I don't have a specific, uh, time frame for you of when something will happen, but I recognize and appreciate that the documentation is certainly lacking in this. So, yeah, Amanda. We'll have soon a unit on the on our MOOC for educators about the um, dashboard. When we'll we'll talk only about the features that interested the professors. So maybe later you can translate it. Uh, which MOOC, the MOOC that Wiki Movement Brazil is building. So it'll be on Wikiversity. Yeah, on Wikiversity. Okay. So if I understood her correctly, she's asking for a tutorial on how how to use the dashboard, and it's a first step linking this recording to your uh, to your pages could be absolutely a, a contribution. Yes. Yeah. Of course, the shorter the videos, the better. Yes. But in the in the meantime, <laughs> this could be good. Okay. Um, let me move on here. So this type is where if you decide after all you want an article scope program, which I will demonstrate in a few minutes, um, that is an opportunity for you to toggle between the different choices that you made in the first screen there. This is again where you toggle between private or not. So if you decide you actually want to make this event private, you can turn it to um, yes, and it will disappear from view from everyone except administrators on the program and events dashboard and you as the facilitator. And then let me get to timeline in a second. The online volunteers, this is if you have community members who are supporting your program, either as ambassadors or some other um, kind of thing, and you want them to be able to um, be listed on the course page so participants can contact them and, or their username. But um, they aren't they don't have the ability to sort of see the real names of students or anything else they are just then listed as a volunteer who would be um, able to help students so you can put in usernames of any community members who are helping out um, with that so let me also talk about the timeline here because this is critically important for education programs so most edit-a-thons don't use this and this is something that you can only get to through this edit details button so let me actually show you again how I did that I'm gonna cancel this so when you have created your course page you will notice it says home editors articles uploads activity will be the tabs if you click this edit details button, you can toggle timeline enabled to yes and click save. And what that will do is generate a new tab on the dashboard that says timeline, which will build a week by week um, interactive timeline of what you would do in your education program course. And so if you are not using timelines for your education program work, I strongly recommend you do that. This is also where you can build in all kinds of trainings. Um, so I'm going to add a particular week here to this. Oh, there's, I need to, hold on. I need to set my, uh, my timing on my program before I can do this. Um, okay, hold on. I think, hold on, I actually, where is, see this is where you're getting me who, instead of Sage, who can set, I think it's at the bottom. Um, okay, there's some way to do this where we set, 
change timeline where we need to set the, no, okay. Well, see, this is where you're getting the complicated state of, there's some way to do this, and whoop, that is not what I wanted to do. <laughs> that really got me out of anything I know. <laughs> Okay, well, I will have to figure out how to do that. Something has gone wrong here. Um, well, I will figure I'll figure that out. But um, but yeah, in the timeline, you should be able to. Oh, maybe I need to click this. Can I can I ask you a question, Leanne? Actually, yes. about using the timeline. So I've I've never used it because I've always struggled to get university students because they're they're on Brightspace or Blackboard. So their lecturers are directing them to that, and that's the ultimate resource. Yes. And I find that they just don't have the bandwidth for an extra one. Or they get confused as to which one is the one that they should be paying attention to. So it's less about the dashboard and more about, like, how do you bridge that? Yes. Um, that is a complicated question that we also face on a daily basis in the wiki education world. There is always a desire to have student have this work with their Coursera or their Blackboard or, um, you know, whichever uh, on Moodle, you know, whichever online platform they're using for their course. Um, unfortunately, that has been technically complicated, and so we haven't been able to do that yet. So I think we do it by just sort of brute force of um, telling them over and over again they need to come to the dashboard, and the dashboard is where tracks their Wikipedia stuff. Um, it is this, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's this click, if you click this edit project dates here, this is where this gets complicated. So this is the where the user interface doesn't work particularly well for the program and events dashboard. So I will say this, is, this was hard. I just tried to find it and had trouble finding it. So let me show you where that is um, again. Here, I, and now I can't even get out of this. Okay, well, let me do this and then I will, um, I will show you. So you need to set the days of the week that your course meets um, in here in order to generate the timeline. And so you can say my course meets, um, you know, oh no, my course meets Monday, here we go, this is where you do it. My course meets Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, but um, we had a holiday week this week in March, and so the class didn't meet this week. So this is some of the advanced kind of features that we've built for Wiki Education's dashboard that get kind of moved over and can be useful or can be not useful, depending on your context, but make things wonky and challenging to use. So I will apologize for that. But once you've set kind of when your course meets, um, it'll actually make the timeline work. Um, so let me show you that again. What I did is I scrolled down here and there's the edit project dates button on the bottom of the timeline on the right hand column. And I clicked that to be able to get this sort of course dates advanced window. And that's where you set the days of the week that your class meets. And then you can set them in there and set your holidays. Um, or you can click that I have no class holidays. And then that'll uh, not put any holidays in. So what those are done is this is based on for Wiki Education's one. We will generate an entire timeline based on a wizard and things like that. But that's sort of out of the scope of the program and events dashboard because each program is unique and has different ideas. And so it's not something that can just be sort of globalized across all programs. And so this version of it doesn't have that built into it, but the infrastructure behind it is still there. So this makes it really complicated. And I apologize for how confusing this is. Um, and hopefully this is something that can get fixed at some point in the future. Um, but one of the interesting, let me add, show you. So if you click this button that says add block here, this will enable you to have different kinds of blocks of information in the course. And so you can have either an in-class, so that can be a like discussion prompt of what students should do when they're in class. You can have an assignment that they're supposed to do before they come to class that day. You can have a milestone, like every student should have an article in their sandbox completed by this date or something like that. So it'll show up as a milestone on the timeline. Um, I'll show you the hand, handouts and resources in a minute. Um, or custom, you can just T type your own text or whatever you want in there. Um, but particularly the most interesting part of this is the training modules. Um, so I wanna show you what these are. And this is a little complicated because the training modules on the program and events dashboard are shared across 
all languages and all projects and all Wikimedia stuff. So for example, there's also the Keeping Events Safe training that the Trust and Safety team at the Wikimedia Foundation put together for trust and safety people who are going to leading conferences like this. But that's something you probably don't want to assign your students to take who are learning to edit Wikipedia. Um, however, there are some um, similarly dealing with online harassment is maybe not a super relevant course. I mean, maybe it is actually for students now that I think about it. But you might want to instead choose like Wikipedia Essential as a training module and if you click save on this what this does is it prompts students to then start actually training modules within here and so if you click over um, this top link up here is the training link and if you click on this this will show you all of the different training resources that are available. So some of them are in English. These Wikipedia training modules are based on Wiki Education's own training modules. And what we did is we took them and removed the Wiki Education specific thing, but they are English Wikipedia specific thing. So you can take them and modify and localize them for your own language, or you can just straight translate them as is. Um, and so I think like here's a tutorial para glams, um, and uh, I'm not going to try to pronounce that. Um, but you can go in if you want to just directly translate these training modules. These are the basic ones for Wikipedia, and then there's basic ones for Wikidata as well. These are based on the ones we created for our participants. And let me show you specifically when you go in here, this gives you sort of the core policies and information on this. So if you start these training modules, if you see down at the bottom, there's a link that says wiki source at the bottom of each of these training modules. If you click on it, what that does is it opens it up in a page in meta that you can then use translate wiki to just translate it into your local language. And so once you've translated, as you can see, there's a lot of languages here, um, including some great work by a lot of people in this room who have spent um, hours translating these modules into their own languages. And once you do that, you will then have have access to, um, you need to ping Sage to have him move it back in to make it one of the available languages. But once you've done that, you will have access to these training modules in your own language that you can add to your timeline so your students can see them and be assigned to actually take them. Any questions on that? Yes, Bukola. So Use the mic. Okay. Okay, so my question is if how would you know that the students are actually taking this course? Okay, great. Um so when you are on your um when you are on your page uh, you should have lost my course now here. Um, you as the instructor can see whether the student has taken, you can go to the student's user page on the program and events dashboard and it will give you the list of all of the trainings modules that they have taken. And it will also tell you um, how many minutes they took to complete it from start to finish. Um, these training modules have quizzes built in that are more knowledge checks. You can't advance to the next slide unless you have the correct answer. So if you answer incorrectly, it makes you go back and, um, and choose a different answer. So that, that's designed pedagogically to get people to actually learn the answer to the question. Um, but everyone finishes with 100% um, from the perspective because we're trying to make people learn. So you will see in your list of students who has completed which training modules that have been assigned on the page so you can see that as an instructor can you pass it back to Rebecca just wondering about I have a few lecturers that are a bit I wouldn't say dashboard adverse but they just you know they deal with their learning platform and they find it difficult to incorporate another one in absolutely um, so is there a way to spit out those metrics like one of the downloadable data or I'm just kind of thinking with the best thing to kind of for verifying that students have done it like you get the student to do a screenshot and then that's something that they have to upload to their main learning environment is yeah. that probably the easiest way to that's, do it I mean when the the list of what's termed editors here um, if we had students enrolled right it would have a full list of their name and then it'll tell you know 
one of three training modules completed right on this list so like ideally the professor could just log in and look at that one page and see which of their students had completed training modules if that's too much then yes i think asking students to take a screenshot and uploading it you know to their other system i've still been using the wikipedia adventure because okay it yes. has that icon check that yeah. has the icon yeah so this would give you you could take a screenshot also of this page and send, or just send them a link that would then give that updated any other questions on trainings? Because I'm going to move on. Well, I, I'm interested in the translation of this into Spanish. So yes. maybe we can talk later or someone, Flor, no sé si te interesa, but we can. I will, so, so the dashboard interface itself is in. Yes, it's in Spanish, yeah. but um, the trainings. The trainings, yes. Yeah. So you would do that on Translate Wiki on yeah. Meta like you would. Um, Okay. any other meta content if you've translated things on meta before no um, I've okay never. <laughs> i am not an expert on translating meta content but i know there are numerous people in this room who have done a lot of work on that who i'm sure could be helpful um, in that um, so let me show one other thing in the timeline here so you may notice there's this resources tab which let me click over to that and so what this does is this automatically generates a list of all of the resources that you have assigned students, so all of the training materials that go throughout your timeline. So if you're asking them, if you have a 10-week timeline, the, the different training modules will be spaced in a week-by-week list on the timeline and the resources tab will just have all of them but you can also manually add resources here so it's a little wonky how you do this you go into the timeline and you click add block and then you choose your block type resources and this can be where if you've created a you know particular handout that you have on commons or a wiki project that you want to include, um, let's say women scientists here, um, you can include a link to it. I'm not going to do that for time's sake right now, but you can just see here what this looks like. And then let's say there's a link, and then I'm going to click save on this. And this doesn't actually appear, well, I guess it does appear in the timeline, but what it actually does is also appears here then on your resources page. So if there's specific things that you have created, this gives you the flexibility to also add additional resources for students um, into this resources tab so that they have a collected list of all of the things that you have generated for your own programs. Um, here, wait, wait. Okay, so I was just thinking in uh, the aspect of like if you have um, generated a list of articles that you want your students or participants to work on, can one just like hyperlink the meta page to this? I will, you could, but I will show you an even okay. snazzier way of doing okay. that. So. Okay, um, let me, um, I can jump over to that. Um, I don't think that's too far off. These are some of the more sort of advanced things, but let me, let me show you how to do that. So under articles, there's a lot of flexibility here of how you want to have articles done. So you can create, um, Bukola, specifically for your question, you can create a list of available articles. And so you can click the add articles and you just drop a whole list of URLs into there. And then that gives all of the list of Wikipedia articles that students can choose from to work on. And they will click assign myself this article and then it will appear on the list of assigned articles. So there will be a list of available articles and then assigned signed articles. So this is if you want them to work on a specific set of Wikipedia articles, you can predetermine that here. Um, since this is just a blank one, I don't have any articles in here, but that's how that feature works. Um, so I would recommend doing that because then as the students look at the articles tab, they have a list and they can specifically select the one they want. The other way of doing this, which I think this gets to I've lost track of who, but someone's question earlier around, can you track just a category? So let me show you how to do that. So I had discussed that in the this home um, edit details tab here, there's ability to change your course type to an article scoped program. So that's exactly what this is. So if you choose article scoped program and you click save, when you go over into the articles here, 
you have the ability to track categories, um, pet scan IDs, page pile IDs, or templates. And so this gives you the ability, what this does, it will only track things that are in this edits to things that are in this particular thing. So for example, if you have created a PET scan, I just did, since we're here in Serbia, I did Serbian Women Scientists um, Depth 2. Um, Hobbin gave a great uh, overview of PET scan earlier in the, in the session. Hopefully you attended that and so the PET scan isn't scary. If it is, watch the recording of his talk. But one of the things you'll get is a PET scan ID for each one of your queries. And so what you can do is take this ID and then copy and figure out where my thing is. You can click add pet scan ID and I can paste this pet scan ID in here. Make sure I have a space before. Whoa, okay. And so I don't have any editors in this particular thing, but you can see that if you can add multiple PET scan IDs, you can add a particular category for your language project, you can add a page pile ID or a template. So if you're using a particular, you want to track edits to articles that have a particular template on it, you can also do this. So this is a really kind of advanced feature. We typically use this for an editing event where you have a lot of experienced editors who might wander off and edit in other topic areas at your edit-a-thon and you want to only track what they did. You're doing a women scientist edit-a-thon, but somebody saw something on their watch list and then we're all Wikipedians and you know how that goes and 10 minutes later you're editing six other articles and then your statistics get all weird because somebody reverted some vandalism and it looked like they added thousands and thousands of words and you don't actually want to track that. So you can manually, there's this track here and you as a um, as a program leader can toggle that on and off so you can manually untrack specific edits but one of if you have a lot of that going on one of the easiest ways to do that would be to create a pet scan of you know what are the you know I want four categories deep of this particular Serbian women scientists category put the pet scan ID in there and then it will only track articles that are in that category or you know however many deep so um, all right let me up here. Um, so I want to show, I'm sorry, this is going way too long. Let me, but you're asking great questions. Let me, let me do a couple of other things. Um, so I want to show you alerts here. So this is something that is working on a handful of language versions. So this is the art and feminism campaign and it works on English Wikipedia and, um, and a few others. And what it is, is this will show you it's at the campaign level. Um, so this was the art and feminism campaign from this year. If you click on this alerts tab, this gives you as the campaign organizer the ability to see typically sort of things like problems um, that are coming up from anybody in your campaign. So in particular with art and feminism, one of the things that they, since they're working on new biographies of, um, of women in art, um, the different ones that you can choose from is editing like articles for deletion or discretionary sanctions, but you can also add a speedy deletion or proposed deletion, and those should work kind of across languages and projects because it's the same, um, the, all the articles that go into the speedy deletion or articles for deletion or proposed deletion are all in the same category. Um, so you should be able to get alerts if one of your students' articles has been nominated for deletion on your language Wikipedia. It'll show up on this alerts um, thing here. So this is a good opportunity for you to sort of see problems across your campaigns of all the courses you're working with. Their students are getting into trouble. And if there's sort of particular, I mean, discretionary sanctions is something I think English Wikipedia, pretty English Wikipedia specific, but these are the ones we've built in for ours. Um, so we have sort of productive course where they're suddenly doing a lot of work and maybe you want to pay attention to what they're doing or uh, they nominated their article for good article on English Wikipedia. So these are very, some of these are very English Wikipedia specific because they've been built for Wiki Education's program, but I know there's a lot of parallels between some of these processes on your language Wikipedias, and we can, tr we can add additional kind of alerts for people to track on your language Wikipedia if this is something that you want to use. Um, but we find this the blocked user, particularly if one of our students gets blocked, we get an alert then about that, and that can be a good opportunity for you to just realize 
realize there's a problem and jump in and investigate. So it does not generate, an, uh, the question was, does it generate an email? The answer is no, because um, the WMF Labs does not have the emailing capabilities. Um, so yes, I wish it did. Wiki Educations does for us, um, but because la this is hosted on labs and it doesn't have the ability to email, that doesn't work. Um, so let me also do a couple of other quick things here, and then I want to make sure I give time for Amanda. Um, so on the home tab of your campaign, I'm going to use art and feminism as an example here because they actually have statistics. Um, so there's both the sort of, oh, okay, there we go. Um, there's both the sort of high level statistics here of kind of edits to Wikipedia. There's Wikidata specific statistics here. So they did some Wikidata edits in, as part of this campaign this year. Um, but one of the things you can do is it gives you the ability to download statistics. Um, and so this gives you a CSV download that gives you all kinds of advanced information about your program, um, including um, information about users and their edits and those kind of things. It's all the dashboard statistics, but in a CSV file. So this can be helpful if you're integrating this with other tools or you're interested in doing some sort of additional analysis in Excel or, or you're doing academic research on student editing patterns. Um, this That CSV will be really helpful in sort of pulling all the things the dashboard generates out as a CSV then to use in other um, tools. Um, and then let me show you one other thing while I'm on the art and feminism one, which is, oh dear, we will go into an individual. They did too much work and it didn't um, do it. So let's see here, we need to go into articles. Um, this actually shows you, this gives you the sort of statistics of the different um, so this is one that has main user space turned on for um, the different uh, user space tracking here that we had, that I had talked about before. This is an example of how it's turned on in a campaign and what it looks like. So you can toggle between what did this program do in English main space, English user space, Wikidata main space, those kinds of things. Um, so in the articles, whoops, this looks like it's mostly commons. Hopefully they had an actual article here. I picked the wrong one to look at. This is where you're always supposed to have picked this before you get up here. Okay. And of course, this one's Wikidata. That's not helpful. The thing I'm trying to show is for Wikipedia. <laughs> okay. Here, I, this should work, I think. Yes, okay, here we go. Okay, so let me show you this. This is a little icon here that is called the authorship highlighting icon. This works in 14 languages. Hopefully this was French is one of them, I believe. Yes. So what is happening here is you can see if you, this brings up a view of the particular article within the dashboard. And then if you scroll down, it should, the info boxes don't render very well, but you can see the entire article here. And if we can figure this out. Okay, I'm gonna do this the, the fast way, which is this little arrow here, if you click on this. This takes and highlights then what each user did to that particular Wikipedia article. So, um, so this gives a great opportunity, especially if you have group work on Wikipedia assignments and students are all collaboratively editing a particular article. This will give you different colors for each of the different students and you can click this little down arrow and see all of the edits that this person made um, as part of this course. So this is really helpful on the assessment end of things for instructors. So for Rebecca's earlier question about sort of how do you get instructors to use the dashboard, this is one of the key ways we get them to use the dashboard because they don't have to look through diffs. Um, they can just go look and see the authorship highlighting here. Um, Florence. Two questions. 
First, I don't understand. Sorry, I don't understand where to find this. Yes, it's very useful. So it would be good. The second thing is, I have no idea what that is. Is it when you are the owner of a campaign? <laughs> is it actually possible to remove certain edits? Yes. And in this case, where or oh, how? So how you would do this is there's this tracked thing here, and I am not the editor of the Art and Feminism campaign, so I can't untrack on that one. But if there are articles there, you can toggle, there'll be a little toggle switch there, and you can toggle it back and forth, and it, you can then untrack specific edits. So those won't show up in the campaign again. But that means you, you need to always be a facilitator in every single program. If you want to be able to do that, yes. Mm -hmm. Or you can encourage um, other ones to, to do that. Okay, and then let me show you where this came from again. Um, so this is on the articles tab of a particular program page. So this is the Art and Feminism 2023 in Togo. Um, and this particular, they made some edits to the article on Togo. And so you can see they added 916 characters. And if you click on this little icon that looks like a page with um, things highlighted, that will pull up then this version. And there's, you can even send specific links if professors are being a little uh, wonky about using the dashboard. You can even, this little link gives them a direct, this icon here will create a link that just has this show article ID up here that will be the direct URL for them to see this view of the article with the highlighting embedded. And you can use these as well. I mean, I use these in my Wikimedia Foundation grant reports. If I'm showing like work that's been done to articles, it's great. We use this to link. And so then you can actually see the additions that students are making. So this is particularly relevant for students who are adding content to existing articles instead of creating a new article, because if it's a new article, everything's highlighted because the student created the whole thing. Yes. Can I take two? Uh, thank you. We, we have a, we, the, in Turkey, mm -hmm. we, the main problem is the content translation, uh, usually. Is there any statistic about the content translation? How many articles create uh, through the content translation or, uh, and if is uh, is exist uh, how many uh, articles is deleted something because the usually the the new users and the students using the content translation and they are not changing anything they are publishing uh, immediately yeah. and then usually it is deleting uh, by the administrator it is the uh, very good uh, da data for the us if it is possible yeah, I, that is a great question that I do not know the answer to. Um, and I just got the five minute warning here and I wanna make sure I give Amanda a chance to talk. Um, so, but let me just say, there is um, on Meta, on the Program and Events Dashboard page, there's a list of ways to get support. There's a Telegram channel and there's um, periodic office hours with Sage. He's the developer of that. There's one coming up on Tuesday. Um, so if you are back in your country by then, I would encourage you to sign up and ask that question to him. Um, I don't know the answer to that. Um, let me sh give two more quick things and then I want to make sure I give time for Amanda as well here. Um, so the first one is, this is maybe less of a challenge for um, education programs, but it still can be a challenge, is that six account creation limit in the same IP. I imagine we've all hit that at edit-a-thons or other training events. Yes. So the dashboard can get you around it. Did you know that? Um, so there's this button that says enable account requests. And if you click this, um, what this does is participants enter their desired username and their email address and they can all type that in and then you as the facilitator get to create their accounts for them. Um, it, here is the sort of technical challenges of this. Um, if it's a language that has wiki edits enabled from the dashboard, which is currently Portuguese, Czech, and English, it will create that account in sort of the home wiki. So this works for sort of Portuguese and Czech Wikipedia and not for any others. Um, otherwise, it will create the account as the home language as English because the English Wikipedia community has enabled this account creation through the dashboard. So it's a specific like um, 
permission that the dashboard has to do account creation. Um, so this is your opportunity to get around the six account limit. Um, if you want it to work with creating a home wiki in your language, then uh, you need to follow the procedure that's listed. It's kind of complicated on, um, on this program and events dashboard page. It's on enabling automatic edits on a new wiki. So that can, and then there's additional things, I think, for the account creator flag for the dashboard account on your, um, um, and then one quick other thing, the updates, this is the most frequently uh, asked question we get, is how often do these statistics update? Um, so you see the sort of top line statistics, I'm not going to worry about it for this test campaign, but how often do the words added get updated? So it depends on the length of your campaign and how many edits there are in it. So if it's a lightweight event that just has a few participants and it's an edit-a-thon that's just an hour long, it will update every couple of hours. But if you have created a campaign that has hundreds of students who are making thousands of Wikidata edits who are using one of the mass editing tools, and so they're making thousands of edits with one click, and you're trying to track all of that on Wikidata, um, it will update more like every day or every couple of days. So the way the technology works is it's prioritizing the lightweight events that have sort of quick um, the ability to update quickly. And if your event has a lot of statistics, it gets deprioritized on the update cycle. So it will update, but it won't update as quickly as the sort of edit-a-thons and lighter weight events. Okay, I am sorry, I just talked at you for nearly an hour and we only have one minute left, but Amanda, do you wanna share real quickly uh, how you guys use it? But I'm not Liana, so. <laughs> um, uh, what I wanted to share with you, it's that you make sure that you instruct professors and educators to think before using the dashboard because when you when they come to the dashboard there are a lot of metrics that uh, there are a lot, of, a lot of number there are a lot of possibilities and this means nothing if they don't have their pedagogical um, issues um, thought before so what are the outcomes they expect, what the, the learnings they students should get with their course, uh, what kinds of accomplishment they expect of their students. Okay, so what, which metrics can show me that? And then when you have that planning, then you go to the dashboard. That is a way that you don't, don't have um, professors uh, giving up on second courses. Uh, that, that we have seen in Brazil, that when we do this planning before with the educators and help them uh, establish the dashboard before, they tend to keep on the, the programs and keep using Wikimedia projects on next uh, educators course. Yeah, better. Let's leave for more questions, it's better. Yeah, and feel free, I know the time's up for this session, so if you want to jump out, feel free to. I will not be remotely offended, but I'm also happy to stick around and answer any additional questions that you have. Okay, are we, streaming folks, are, are we still streaming? Okay, so we should still use mics, okay. Okay, I don't know if this is a wise question to ask, but sometimes when I create dashboard, I want to delete them, maybe because I did some errors and then I try to click on delete program, but it doesn't work. I don't know why. Okay, well, let's, let's see because this is my test campaign. So, <laughs> live demo here. <clears throat> so you click on the delete page. Okay, so you have to remove all of the campaigns first. So, um, so one of the things about uh, the dashboard is every program if you don't put it into one of your specific campaigns, which let me show you how to do that. I think I missed that. Oop. The clicking is very different on my personal laptop. Um, so down here at the bottom of the page, there's this campaigns thing here. So you can click the plus and you can add or remove campaigns. So you can see the minus. I'm going to remove it from the miscellaneous campaign here. I I have no idea what I just did. Uh, just, yeah. uh, no, the one. This one. 
Yeah. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. I clicked some random. So now it's not in any campaign. So you need to make sure you remove it from all of the campaigns. But this is where at the beginning I was talking about there could be, you can put a page in as many campaigns as you want. So you can create a campaign for your affiliate, for your affiliate in a particular year, and then for your affiliate in a particular year education program. So you would need, if you want to delete one, you need to remove it from all of the campaigns first. And then click save. And then you go and delete the program. And then you need to title, you need to type the title. So this is designed so that you don't just accidentally click a button and delete it. So you have to type in EduWiki 2023. And then I'm going to assume this button says delete. I, maybe, we, okay, <laughs> confirm, okay. <laughs> um, and so now it's gone. So my campaign just disappeared. So that's how you do it um, if, you, if you're trying to delete a campaign. Other questions? Maybe one small question. And um, is it possible to create trainings? Yes. So if you're interested in creating a whole suite of trainings to add here, um, you can. Um, and the Wi Fi has suddenly decided not to work. Um, but yeah, if you want to either modify or adapt existing trainings, you can create them. Um, on, yeah, you can create a new one on Meta and then have it get ported over here so that it could be available for you. It is a lot of work, um, so bear that in mind. But if you're interested in doing that, it is um, possible, and you should work with Sage directly on specific the specifics of how to do that. So. Hi, Liana. Um, hey, two yeah. quick questions. When you create an account for students, do you know if it's a Wikipedia account or is it in Meta? And the other question is, I understood that the timeline is optional. Can you still assign trainings, perhaps with less days, if you, you, know, you need to? So, so yeah, so the, with the, if you're using the account creation for students, that is if, you are, if your home wiki is Portuguese or Czech, you can, it will create it on those two language Wikipedia versions because those communities have accepted the dashboard as account, having account creator rights. Um, if it's not one of those two, then it will default to English and will um, create the account on English Wikipedia as the home wiki, which, you know, is just something noted in your account, but has, you know, not a lot of meaning outside of that. Um, you get counted in a different language project statistics in like the board elections, but that's about it. So, and then your other question, the timeline, yes. So no, you can only add the trainings on the blocks um, on the timeline. You could just create a link, right? I mean, let's say you wanted to assign these um, these Wikipedia training modules. You could say you could just like put a link in the description that says, I mean, I just deleted my campaign, so I can, or my <laughs> programs, I can't show you, but you could just copy this and type it into the description of like take these trainings and have just an HTML link, but it won't give you that like start training and it won't track them. Um, in the sense of then student, you won't see the timing of what students have completed which trainings. That's all based on what's in the timeline. Okay, thank you. Do we have any Telegram group or any platform to clarify the doubts? Yes, the Telegram group is listed on Meta down here at the bottom under Get Support here. Um, you can see the, the link there. You're welcome to join it. It's not a super active Telegram group, um, but maybe it will be after this session and you all join it and start asking questions. Sage is going to hate me tomorrow morning when he wakes up and a Telegram is, uh, is all full of questions from people from this session. Uh, Jana, I, I know you mentioned it, but I... I Th that's okay. I had to go through things quickly. Ask, yeah. ask again. I'm happy to keep saying. The, the, the forcing the reload of the dashboard to get the... Yeah, super important when we do a live uh, session. Yes. Okay, let me find a page here. Um, now I'm regretting deleting my page because... Okay. I'm not sure if I can actually do this because... Um, I am not, 
no, I can't. Okay, so because I'm not the facilitator of this, I can't do it, but under this actions, there's a button that you should be able to click if you're the facilitator of this that says, I think it says something like schedule update. Um, and if you click that button, it will enable, it will put it in the queue to update next. So um, it prioritizes it higher. Um, unless it's one of those long running, again, those sort of long running with lots of Wikidata edit campaigns kept bringing down the dashboard. You may remember about a year ago, it kept dying like every day. And part of the reason it was doing that is because there were so many campaigns that were tracking very active Wikidata editors who were using mass editing tools over long time periods. And um, that just, the update cycle just took way too long. Um, and so to fix that problem, we've moved the, this is my not highly non-technical explanation for this, so apologies to those of you who actually understand technology, but we moved the sort of prioritization of updates for those long campaigns to a sort of secondary prioritization or something like that. And those, so those don't get updated very frequently, but the sort of edit-a-thons and other events do get updated. So on average, what can we expect? I, I found it, it's a uh, scheduled data updates. Scheduled data updates, yeah. yes, yes. Uh, uh, on average, what can we so hope on average, for? it's sort of every few hours. Um, but uh -huh. I think if you click the schedule data update, it should move that particular one to the top of the queue. Uh -huh. um, so hopefully, that should be within an hour, maybe even less. Click it and tell me how long it takes. Any other questions? I'm also happy we can end the streaming now, and I'm happy to also deal with any. Nope. Oh, the streaming's gone. Okay, never mind. We've already ended the streaming. I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy to answer any individual questions you have about your dashboard pages as well. Thank you very much. Now we have a lunch break, so bon appetit.